Hello and welcome to this session on the afternoon of our third day at Retail Revival. We already heard from many brands how they tackle common obstacles with innovative strategies. Now we will hear from Optilize and Flaconi how they provide customers with unique experiences across all channels. I am Norbert Russell, Channel Sales Manager at Edmarsis and responsible for our partner ecosystem. Today I'm delighted to announce our two speakers, Janina Kraus, Team Lead CRM at Flaconi, leading online shop for beauty products, and Robert Repols, CEO of Optilize, our partner and specialist for direct mailing. They will talk about Flaconi's customer-centric marketing approach and give us insights on how they use different channels to offer a fully personalized and unique experience to their customers. I'm really excited to hear about their strategy. And with this, I'm handing over to you, Rob. Thank you very much. Very, very excited to be presenting today and to be joined by Janina uh, to, to talk about what Flaconi is doing, how they're leveraging Amasis, how they're leveraging the Optilize platform to take their customer centricity to the next level. And with that, I, I would actually hand over the microphone to you, uh, Janina, <laughs> to talk a bit about yourself as well as Flaconi. Yes, um, my name is Janina. I'm the team lead of the um, CRM team at Flaconi. I'm um, at Flaconi since 2016, so for nearly five years now. And um, yeah, we are a team of eight wonderful people and we are working on strategies and new technologies um, to optimize the customer communication. And of course, with the goal um, to establish um, a long lasting customer uh, relationship with the Flaconi customers. Um, when it comes to Flaconi, um, who is Flaconi? We are um, one of Germany's leading online beauty retailers. And we are offering about 850 international beauty brands. And in 2020, um, Flaconi um, achieved uh, a revenue of nearly 300 million euros. And yeah, we have the strategic long-term goal to um, be the most loved um, online beauty destination in Europe. Yeah, really, really great company. I'm, I'm actually... Um really excited uh, that, that we're working with you. The things that we're doing with Flaconi, uh, Optilize is a direct mail software. So our solution is used to run physical mailing campaigns in a more customer centric manner. So things like letters, postcards, and self mailers. Um, next to Flaconi, we have around 300 other customers across all industries, e-commerce, retail, but then also it's a more traditional industries like insurance and finance across 25 countries. Uh, something that we're very proud of is that we are 100% climate neutral. So everything that we're showing you today, despite that it's physical mail is, uh, is climate neutral, because we, we compensate the effects of sending out physical mail while at the same time enabling companies to actually reduce these campaigns that let's say don't make so much sense. So really the power of what Optilize does lies in three areas. First, automation, moving away from just mass mailings to one-time campaigns towards more trigger-based touch points. So we'll, we'll have a couple of cool examples of what Flaconi is doing here. Personalization, right? Thinking about how content, even in direct mail can be more relevant how you can leverage things like the um, Imasis uh, recommendation service or recommendation engine, and then omni-channel, how to link this channel with other channels um, to have better or more powerful omni-channel customer journeys, which again is something that uh, is nicely done at Flaconi, where this is a screenshot from <laughs> of the Air Optilize dashboard showing the Flaconi campaigns. We're not going to dive into this right here, but I think what's what's nice about this, what you can see is that Flaconi has a, a constant flow of campaigns that are running, that are triggered, that are um, that are live. Um, and that's that's I think only possible to that extent if you take a or a tech-driven or software-driven approach that enables you to move away from manual processes. But let's take a step back before we dive into uh, the customer journeys and, and direct mail itself. Uh, Janina, maybe maybe you can give some overview in terms of where um, 
where Flaconi stands, how you see customer centricity, customer first, and, and what role that plays at, uh, in your job and in the company. Yeah, so um, for us, the customer is um, the most important, most important part of our um, daily business. So as you can always also see on um, these um, hashtag customer first, it's um, one of the five defined values of Flaconi. And every strategic company decision or goal um, is geared to um, these five defined values. So um, the customer first value really puts the customer in the focus of everything. So for us, it's really important to understand the customer, its individual needs, and also to satisfy um, these individual needs. And um, to fulfill this approach, um, you really have to offer um, a smooth customer experience um, on site in the shop, as well as off site in different um, yeah, communication touch points. And um, that's um, our main focus. And um, you can see communication um, as a key factor because when you are interacting with a customer, um, he's telling you a lot of his buying intentions, his past behavior, his interests, and also yeah, about its needs. And for us, um, it's very important to put all this information into our um, different touch points. So we do not have only um, email or only app or only direct mail because there is not this one communication tool that fits every needs. So it's um, yeah the combination of everything. So um, a really successful communication, you can say, is built on these three main pillars. You can see here, so it's the cross-channel, it's the alignment, and it's the engagement. And only um, if these three pillars um, yeah, work or fits, um, goes into another, then you have a really good um, base for building up a good communication. I think that's, by so, the way, a really good point. To that like you need a strategy before you dive into the implementation and you need to take a, take a step back and think about what you want to achieve uh, versus Correct. being too, too operational is what I see very often, right? Just being too- Yeah. Uh, too, uh, yeah, you can try to fast. implement every different kind of communication tool, but you really have to see um, which communication tool the customer wants. So um, you can implement emails and send a thousand of emails per day, but if the customer doesn't show any engagement, then maybe email is not the correct tool. So you really have to see um, which communication tool fits to um, which need and also in which part of the life cycle. Yeah, I think uh, and that's the, you, you mentioned it before, right? Or, or just, just again, just now, uh, there is no perfect channel. Uh, I think that's something Maybe even from my point of view, of course, I'm tainted. I, I, I love direct mail just because that's what we do. But at the same time, what I always tell co companies is that there is no perfect channel and there is no, whenever I read somebody claiming, oh, email is dead or direct mail is dead or this doesn't work. I, I always tell them that that's not the case. You have to think, like you said, about the customer. You have to think about where this customer stands and if we look at direct mail, of course, if you don't have an opt-in, you can reach customers without having an opt-in, but it takes longer. And even, even with an agile setup, and it's a lot more expensive, right? Yeah, that's correct. So you really have to check which customer is um, the perfect customer for a print mailing. So you cannot um, say the email is dead and everything we are doing um, in with the communication um, goes via print mailing. So if it really has to be a very fast communication, so you want to inform a customer maybe a, um, about a special um, deal or a sale, then the email or push notification might be the best option because a direct mail needs some time and then the deal is over. So um, you really have to find out the, this perfect trigger point for a direct mail. And it's more about um, yeah, the customer retention and not really about communicating um, short deals. It's more like um, yeah, you're nourishing and pampering your customers more. Yeah, yeah I think that's, 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 that's a good point. Like you, the kind of the use case, but and then also seeing what you do when. I always say like, if you can send an email, send an email, if it, and then if it converts, great. Um, 
because that's it, it's just cheaper it's more efficient you have a higher roi um but then again if if you can't uh, there's other options how do you think about like to what extent do you think about for example customer value that's something that we have here right the question like is customer value high enough for a certain uh, for a certain customer that that i target via let's say direct mail um i think it's very common to spend a lot of money um, in, for the acquisition of customers. And you, I think a lot of companies um, are really shy about investigating in existing customers and loyal customers. But if you already acquired this customer, this customer is open for a communication and a relationship with you, then you don't have to shy away to investigating your customers. So um, you can also spend, um, money for direct mail in the beginning of a life cycle so the customer is very interactive with your product and your service so of course the value of a customer at this moment maybe is a little bit lower but if you look at these uh, potential value of this customer if you're investigating at the beginning of this um, lifetime of the customer with different um, communication um, touch points and different tools and if the customer really sees um, this company is investigating um, in our relationship and I'm important to this company, then also a direct mail is um, worth for maybe a more less value customer at the beginning. I think that's a very good point. Uh, I, I overall, I think, or what I'm seeing overall in the market is that there's a shift from what you also kind of described, there's a shift from new customer acquisition towards more CRM new customer acquisition getting just because it's getting more expensive it's getting more difficult so once you have a customer why don't we think about how to increase lifetime value how to make sure that we don't have to reacquire that customer down the road so yeah i think that's there's different things like there's overall developments in online marketing that that lead to that but then there's also yeah the, the, the realization that crm is actually extremely powerful in, in terms of making more out of the or the most out of that initial marketing investment yeah yeah i think it's also you can see it in different business models that um you are really receiving great offers if you are um, a new customer or if a company wants to require you but um when you are a loyal customer then you have as a company so many new touch points to communicate with your customers so you have for example a birthday or um, an anniversary so that are really um, points in your um, relationship with the customer, you are normally also talking to your friends too. So if someone um, has a birthday, then you are maybe sending a card and why not doing that, that to your customers? So it's um, offering really great options. And also um, I think for myself, when I um, when my birthday, um, I opened my inbox and I received thousands of mails from different companies and there's not really the awareness for this one email of one company. But if I look in my inbox um, at my door and I receive maybe a flyer with some nice words and nice greetings, it's much more, much longer in my mind than just um, an email. I think that's a very good point. I, I like that the idea that uh, along the journey, like loyalty can be nurtured and lo loyalty can be uh, created through uh, touch points where we think about how we can value the customer. Yeah, I, I love the whole birthday birthday campaign topic. Uh, of course, like now I've, I've ju I'm just showing the different things that you're doing at Flacodi. Maybe you can give a, a, like a bit of an overview of the other touch points. I, I really also think that the whole idea of, like you said earlier on, like a welcome, welcome touch point is a very, very powerful one to initiate a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, or for example, um, when you are um, at the tenth order, so as you can see here, we have um, a loyalty mailing for our um, tenth order. And I think that's also really important because you are appreciating the tenth order of a customer. So I think it's not, it's not yeah. that someone is ordering um, 10 times at the same company today. So you can always use these different touch points and you're not really thinking about that this is a special moment for a customer, but you can make it a special moment mm. in the yeah. with your customer. And also if you, um, for example, in the um, upper left, you have these um, churn prevention or reactivation. So especially in this part of a relationship with a customer, 
there's not really any interaction. So the customer is not visiting your website. He's not opening your emails. So you have to find new ways to communicate with the customer. And especially at this point, you can send him a print mailing and he can put it on the, um, the fridge maybe and um, with a nice voucher and maybe some offers that there are new brands in the shop and we really miss him. So it really, um, yeah, for me, it has a higher value than, than just sending an email and saying, hey, we miss you. And um, that's it. But you can also combine it because sometimes you also have customers which are still showing interaction or engagement mm -hmm. with your emails, but they are not really buying. So you can also combine these um, two touch points. So send them an email, maybe see, okay, if it's clicking or maybe also what kind of links are clicked. Is there any interaction on the website? And based on this behavior, you can um, trigger a print mailing if um, no order happened in the last days. So there are very different options to combine these um, different communication tools. I like that. I, what I like is that you basically what you just described was churn prevention versus reactivation. And I think a lot of companies focus too much on reactivation. So when you've already lost a customer um, yeah. and they haven't bought in or interacted at all in three months, you just, then you come back and you try to relive the kind of the feeling of uh, the relationship that you had. But I think it's, it's a lot more powerful to think about it in a more agile manner where you say, hey, I, I, I have the indications that I'm losing this customer that they're, yeah, they're not buying, they're not, they're interacting here and there, but it's getting less. It's, it's we're kind of breaking up and I prevent that before it has happened. And uh, what I very often see is that that has a big effect on performance because once you've lost them, uh, you're, you're starting you're not from scratch again, but you are you have to rebuild a lot more than you do if you if you read the signals right through the right kind of setup and, and interact fast and go for churn prevention and not reactivation. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, yeah. <laughs> and next next point is I think also an interesting one and I think it's very often uh, underestimated is the, the question of format so uh, with direct mail we have all these these beautiful options <laughs> we can do all kinds of yeah. uh, sim simple but you know postcard things but then also go crazy with with different you know the the, the self mailer formats etc and I always like normally when I when we talk to customers, we tell them, hey, you have to A/B test. There's lots of things for every, even between use cases and an audience, etc. There's different kinds of formats that perform differently. Uh, maybe yeah, you can give an, an idea of like what what we see here, how you see yeah. formats and what do you do you when and how maybe how you got there. Hmm? Yeah, when you start at the beginning, so just to compare different communication tools. Um, we saw in our test that um, a print mailing, because a lot of people saying print is dead. We had that at the beginning, but I can say it's not dead. So we can see really an uplift of around 60% in conversion rate. So if we compare a classical email to um, a print mailing, and I think that is really, really great numbers. And when you see these numbers, then it's also worth to investigate in um, offline communication tools. And um, yeah, when you when you see that offline is a is a communication tool a customer is interacting with, then you can also um, yeah test on these different options to optimize even that one print mailing. So we tried out um, to send out um, a print mailing um, enveloped and unenveloped, and um, we saw that in the enveloped um, test group the conversion rate even has an uplift about. 40 percent but are really really um great numbers so we are decided to send out our print mailings um enveloped so um because it's something like more special or more personal to the customer because if you are receiving um maybe marketing stuff at home and you have totally um thousands of different flyers in your inbox then maybe you throw it away but if you really have an enveloped print flyer you are opening it because you are interested what's in there so that's a really good option to optimize um, your performance and also the conversion rate of the print mailing and when it comes to different formats you have to think about who you are talking with so for example if you are really um, identifying a loyal customer group 
we can try to use these customers as brand ambassadors. So you can not just create a small flyer with a voucher and we miss you or thank you for your order. You can create really um, much more content about it. And the customer can give it to your friend and you can put a refer a friend voucher on it. So you really have different options um, yeah, in the um, communication style and also yeah, in, the, um, in the content of the mailing. So that's um, really great. That's really what yeah, we're like working yeah. on. Try it out to self mailer. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's also a balance between costs, right? Like, because you have different, right? We were also going from cheapest to more expensive options. Um, and the question is then of always course, like, yeah. for, so, for whom do I use what? Huh? Yeah, a self mailer, of course, is um, a little bit more expensive than yeah. um, I would say a normal um, flyer. But yeah. if you're really using um, the right customer group and you see mm -hmm. that your performance, that it's, um, yeah, that the results are great. So why not doing different formats for different groups? So yeah. that's a possibility we have and we should use these different um, um, kind of formats because also when you're thinking about um, an email or push notification, you also differ there in the style. So why not doing it um, in the print mailing? So, yeah. I agree. I agree. I always love it when it's, when it's like, when you say we're doing this in digital, uh, why don't we do it physical? Uh, why, you know, we, we see that this works digital. This is nice transition. What can we do physic it physically? It's the question like kind of the, the next level is the, the, the whole topic of picture personalization, I think, which is interesting, but it's also something to experiment a lot, right? Yeah, so here you are also have the topic. You are doing uh, personalization is a very big thing in um, email marketing and also um, on site in your shop. So why not doing it offline? So um, we tried it, um, as you can see, it's one of our Christmas campaigns from last year. And um, yeah, we did a. Um, it's not um, a triggered based or an automated mailing. It was a big yeah. mailing um, around Christmas. And um, yeah, we did an A-B testing with our customers to send a more um, generic Christmas visual against um, a more personalized or highly personalized print mailing. So um, yeah, we used a recommendation engine of Imazes. And so it's highly personalized based on the clicking or buying behavior of the customers. And when the customer is receiving this mailing, he really sees the products he viewed um, in the shop or maybe maybe fitting products to the one um, he bought before. So that's a really, really great option um, to also personalize, um, not only in name or, for example, in the voucher, but really um, in the different content of the equipment. I think that's a very, like, the, what, what I like about, I mean, there's different benefits of personalization. One of them is also uh, why it's, it's, it's powerful for the reasons that you have an email, right? Like, say, a similar reason, because it's, it's physical, but in the end, it's also customer interaction. Why I think it's also very powerful very often to use personalization is because you said it before, like when people open their mailbox, normally they have a lot of, there's a lot of useful, useless stuff in there. A uh, lot of, lot of <laughs> unpersonalized stuff that is just dropped in everywhere. And for the customer to realize this company is writing to me, um, they, you know, this is this is for me especially, and this is not for my. You know, my neighbor doesn't get this. I think that drives a different kind of performance perception. Um, yeah. Also, that um, I have a huh? feeling that yeah, I have a feeling that the, the company knows um, about my behavior or what I like and is um, uh, really um, is interested in yeah in my relationship with the company because I can send the same stuff to everyone, but as we can see in the emails, we can also see in print that personal personalization is, um, yeah, the king you're always saying. <laughs> yeah, yes. I think that's that's a that's a good transition to the last question. What's next? Maybe like some, an outlook, where do you see um, e-commerce going or Flaconi? Um, what can you tell us? <laughs> um, yeah, for us, it's, always important to look in new technologies and to see where the trends in CRM. So I think one of the most important topics in the last year is um, artificial intelligence. Yeah. So you can use it for um, yeah, personalization on site, you can use it for the segmentation of emails, but maybe it also works for segmentation of print mailings. 
So um, that one is really, so we have this topic, it's all about data since a few years. There are so many unused options to use your data and to really not use it for segmentation, but also to find different um, yeah, communication styles and new tools. And that is really our focus. So we really want to build um, a special relationship with our customer. So the customer really should have the feeling that, um, yeah, he wants to have this relationship and he wants to also investigate in this relationship. And for that, um, you always have to find yeah, new options or um, yeah, new ways to communicate with your customer and also mm -hmm. to make money and um, yeah, to interact because I think, especially in this digital fast moving world, you are really, really um, easily bored or very quick. So um, you have to find um, yeah, new ways. So interact with your customer. And um, I think that's the most important point we are working on. And I think there's still a lot of potential that is um, unused at the moment. And um, yeah, I think great great summary i think like what what i what i always see the, from my experience the companies that um you know are i think the most successful in, in taking these steps are normally the ones that uh, see the opportunities in different new kind, ways of technology new ways of interacting and then there's lots of testing not everything works not everything is smooth um but but that's i think that yeah also what i see like the way yeah but you also have to, you always have to just test and find out if it works. And um, maybe there is this um, golden key you are finding while you're <laughs> testing and you can take it and um, make it even bigger. And if it's not working, then yeah, you tried it, yeah. but without trying to find this perfect combination of communication of tools or of yeah, different content. So it's, it's all about testing and yeah, trying out new things. Love it. I absolutely agree. And with that, <laughs> I give over or hand over the, the microphone phone to you, Norbert. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you so much for this value, uh, valuable insights. So and especially uh, thanks to Janina. So uh, for, especially for your open feedback. So it's that, so you give us really a deep insight to your strategy. This is not, uh, uh, yeah, this is really special, let's say, because nobody tells such open about your internal strategy. The, we, we appreciate this. So, uh, and then uh, Rob, as you said, direct mail for me, it's a hidden champion. As I said, when, when it comes down to chance. So for me personalized, when I see uh, a lot of feedback from customers, when you discuss with uh, uh, what is the right channel and you're absolutely both, you're absolutely right that uh, direct mail is for me the hidden champion. It's the most expensive for sure. Everybody knows <laughs> that. But uh, uh, when you look to your experience at Glaconi, it works. And that's that's uh, at the end of the day uh, the, the the right thing to do. So and also please don't forget to have a look at our other retail revival sessions. Many of them are already available on demand in case you've missed them. And yeah, this is the end of the session. And I want to again say a big thank you to you, Janina, and Robert, and for for sure to our viewers. So we hope you have a great time at retail revival and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.